Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. A while back, I did a video about how they're starting to crack down on the third-party food delivery apps. The idea that you want to order food from a restaurant, you go on the internet or you go to an app or something, and uh, you order food from the restaurant. But instead of ordering directly from the restaurant, you order it from a third party, and they get the food from the restaurant and deliver it to you, and they charge you for that service. And there's a whole bunch of these out there, uh, DoorDash, Grubhub, and others. And Michael sent me notes to Steve, check this out. A law was passed in Illinois this summer, and I talked about this notion, I think back in January or February. And there's a whole bunch of problems that arise in this industry, one of which is if you go onto the internet and somebody type in the name of a restaurant, type in delivery, there's a good chance that you won't go to the restaurant's website. You'll go to the website of a delivery company. Now, that is simply search engine optimization, but sometimes people think that they're ordering from the restaurant directly because some of the third-party apps will actually go to the website of the restaurant and grab their artwork, their trademarks, their photographs, their menus, and put them on their website. So this morning, I was poking around doing some research on this, and I, I decided to look up a restaurant I know very well, and um, I got taken to another website, not the restaurants, but another website, and it says, we're currently closed, but feel free to browse our menu. We are currently closed. Feel free to browse our menu. Yet I was not looking at the website of the restaurant. I was looking at a delivery website. So a lot of times I think people are confused. And it causes a lot of problems, not the least of which is that when people get bad food, they assume it's the restaurant's fault. And especially if they don't know that the restaurant does not have a deal with this third-party app. So... It's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. But Illinois just passed this statute. And it got passed a couple months ago, but it had to work its way through, you know, the old, I'm just a bill on Capitol Hill. Talking about House Bill 3205, enrolled from Illinois, an act concerning business. Be it enacted by the people of the state of Illinois, represented in the General Assembly. This act can be cited as the Fair Food and Retail Delivery Act. Section 5, definitions. Agreement means a written agreement between a merchant and a third-party delivery service. Customer means the person, business, or other entity that places an order for a merchant's products through a digital network. Digital network means a third-party delivery service's internet site or online enabled application software or system that allows a customer to view, search, and purchase products for delivery by a third-party delivery service to a customer. Likeness means identifiable symbols attributed and easily identified as belonging to a specific merchant or retailer. Merchant means a restaurant, bar, or other retail entity. Third-party delivery service means a company, organization, person, or entity outside of the operation of the merchant's business, not wholly owned by the merchant, that provides delivery services to customers through a digital network. And a third-party delivery service driver means an individual that provides delivery services on behalf of a third-party delivery service to customers. We're going to get to what the statute's all about, but notice this is not limited just to restaurants. It actually says that it could be it could be a restaurant, a bar, but also other retail entities. And so the statute then says uh, third-party use of merchant likenesses and delivery. A third-party delivery service may not purchase or use the name likeness, registered trademark, or intellectual property belonging to a merchant and may not take or arrange for the pickup or delivery of an order from a merchant through a digital network without first obtaining written consent from the merchant. So if you are running a third-party delivery app and you want to say, I'm going to be able to deliver food from that restaurant there, just call me directly, I can't take all of their stuff off their website and put it on mine and say, here, this make just so you know, this is the same restaurant that I'm going to get the food from for you. So one of the things I've heard is that restaurants have complained that people thought they were ordering directly from the restaurant because they went to a website that had their logo, their trademark, their photograph, their menu, all that information, and it had simply been taken off the website. And then here's the important part, section 20, enforcement and penalties. Those are often the important part. (laughs) Pro tip, a merchant whose likeness is used or pickup or delivery is arranged through a third-party delivery service in violation of Section 10, which says you got to have a written agreement, may bring an action in the circuit court in a county in which the merchant conducts business to recover actual damages 
or up to $5,000, whichever is greater. Court may, in its discretion, award punitive damages and other equitable relief it deems appropriate. So if you own a restaurant and discover that somebody's doing this, uh, it appears that for each instance of that, you can sue for up to $5,000. Now, that is the entire statute. It's a very short statute. One page, two sides, a big chunk down here that I can write my notes on. Uh, And so this bill got passed uh, back in June in Illinois. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody has made any radical changes just yet, but uh, it appears to have been enacted and had gone into place. And so I did a little bit of research this morning, and I went onto the Internet, and I typed in some names of restaurants I'm very familiar with. One of them, I know the restaurant's website because I've looked at it before, but when I typed in their name and delivery, because they do not deliver, Up popped one of these sites, one of these food delivery apps. And like I said, there was a note saying we're currently closed, but feel free to browse our menu. Our menu. We are closed. (laughs) It's not your menu. It's somebody else's menu. But this is, of course, in Michigan. And Michigan does not have such a law yet. Uh, We should. But one of the things I discovered is I looked at the menu and noticed that all the prices were higher because the restaurant has their actual menu on their site. And this site had scrubbed the information off the menu and redone it in their own format and raised the prices. So they raised the prices, and I assume they charge for delivery, so that's how they make their money. But if somebody didn't know that they were ordering through a third-party app, they might think, oh, my favorite restaurant has changed its menu. But there's another problem, and these food delivery services allow you to rate the restaurants from whom you've ordered food. And many of the ratings, the the descriptions, the reviews, uh, were clearly not about the food, but about the delivery. So for instance, there's one that said, delivery was terrible. So if you look up the review of this restaurant on a delivery site, it says, delivery was terrible. Now, some people are going to go, oh, that's a commentary not on the restaurant, but on this delivery service assuming you know and realize it's a third-party delivery service unaffiliated with that restaurant. I also found one that said, received order one and a half hours late. Don't think it was the restaurant's fault. Don't think. (laughs) They're not sure. Um, I've eaten at this restaurant countless times. Never took me an hour and a half to get my food, ever. And so I suspect it wasn't the restaurant's fault. But the fact that people aren't sure about that does seem to be a little bit of a problem. And I was going through other complaints and the ones that had to do with the product, the food, even those could have been the fault of the delivery company. So you call up the delivery company, delivery company calls the restaurant, places the order, pays the order, picks up the order and brings it to you. They've inserted themselves into this transaction, okay? So I saw several complaints saying that people had ordered their food a certain way and it came delivered another way. One was, I ordered the salad with this dressing and it came with this dressing. Whose fault is that now? Because if you called the restaurant and said, I ordered the salad and it came with the wrong dressing, they're going to go, who are you? We've never dealt with you before. And by inserting themselves into the transaction, they've actually disrupted something on a legal basis that I think is important for people to spot. I often talk about buyers and sellers. You walk into a car dealership, you're the buyer, they're the seller, assuming that you buy a car from them. And the buyer-seller relationship is very special in in, in the American legal system. Very, very important. And so if you call up a third-party app and say, I'd like to order a a salad from my favorite restaurant, and you pay the third-party app and they go get the food and bring it to you, the seller is not the restaurant. It's a third-party app. They're buying it and reselling it to you. And in fact, as noted, they might be jacking the price up along with the delivery fee. So if your food gets delivered and it is not what you ordered, who is your complaint with? You do not have a complaint with the restaurant because you didn't deal with them. You only dealt with a third-party app. So if your food got delivered and it was cold, it was prepared wrong, it was the wrong order, anything like that, You do not have a complaint with the restaurant. And so the fact that these third-party apps let you review the restaurant on their site (laughs) when they're the ones who've inserted themselves into this transaction 
is absurd. And so I was just going through there looking at all these complaints about the food and, and things like it came with the wrong salad dressing. Uh, the food is cold. These are the sort of things that you'd complain about to a restaurant that does delivery. But since these restaurants don't do delivery and you've gone to the third party app, your complaint should be aimed 100% at the app. And you should say, these people that I ordered through got my order wrong and they delivered the food an hour and a half late. Nothing to do with the restaurant, most likely. And, and, and how would you ever know otherwise? So I can imagine, and I've heard stories about people who have restaurants. I've even heard of restaurants that have delivery services. And people go online knowing, well, they do deliver. Oh, and I found this site here. And it says, we're currently closed, but feel free to browse our menu. <laughs> a few minutes later, and they open up, you place an order thinking you're ordering from the restaurant. And that's one of the things that I've often harped about. And in my mind, the biggest problem with these third-party delivery apps is that many of them do appear to know that they are misleading customers. And I think that consumers who are misled uh, have been wronged. Uh, if somebody does something that is, that is deceptive in its very nature uh, and causes a consumer to spend money in a way they wouldn't have otherwise, I think that's a problem. And so that's the problem I've had with these third-party delivery apps all along. I have no problem if somebody started a company and said, if you want food from any restaurant, you know, we can do that for you. And then if they went to the restaurant and said, we'd like to work something out with you, because interestingly enough, that business did exist. I remember in the early 1990s, long before anybody knew anything about apps and whatnot. And I remember being in an office uh, in a section of town where there's a lot of office buildings, but there are restaurants nearby. And a company came in and went to all the restaurants that didn't deliver and said, we'll do your delivery service for you. It'll be a turnkey operation. Give us your menu. We'll set up uh, the whole business. And then they went around to the businesses. And this is before the internet even, in a roundabout way. The internet existed, but it wasn't as widespread in use like it is now. And they handed out the menus and they said, if you, if you want to order from this restaurant that doesn't normally deliver, call us. We'll take care of the order. We'll run up, get it, bring it to you. And it's going to cost you some money. So that business model existed. And, and, and you know, th that makes sense to me. But when you have a situation where somebody goes, oh, I can set up a website. So if you go to search for your favorite restaurant and see if they deliver, you wind up at my website and you'll think that I'm working with a restaurant, but I'm not. And then when you're upset with the delivery, you get mad at the restaurant. That's a problem. That's a problem. And so all you got to do is read the complaints underneath any restaurant on one of these sites. And you'll realize that many of them are obviously the fault of the delivery company, such as delivery was terrible. Okay. To many others that you go, well, we don't know if that's the restaurant's fault, such as the salad was delivered to the wrong salad dressing. Well, did the third-party app place the order correctly? I don't know. I don't know. So I think it's a good law. We'll have to see what happens. But I suspect what's going to happen is just piles of litigation. Because <laughs> that's what happens when somebody comes by with one of these industry disruptor apps and somebody comes along and tries to outlaw it. Next thing you know, there's people out there who are saying, Wait, we should litigate this. This isn't fair. But the cool thing is this is such a simple statute. Like I said, it's two pages. And the first page is almost entirely definitions. And keep in mind, again, it does not limit itself to just restaurants. It could be a restaurant, a bar, or other retail entity. So if you want to have a business that's going to get between the buyer and the seller, uh, you got to get the written permission of the seller if you want to use their menus, their logos, their trademarks, their names, any of that kind of stuff. Got to get that in writing. Otherwise, you run to follow this law if you do that in Illinois, in Illinois. So I think it's a good law, but we'll see how it goes. Michael, thanks for sending it. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Never forget the magic you believed in as a child.